Apologies if I look hot, dishevelled and unkempt, but uh, here in Croatia it's very hot at the moment and I'm not getting much sleep because of our new uh, little baby girl. So sorry about my appearance, but I'm going to soldier on with this video because it's extremely important. Today I lodged an official complaint with the UK's Charity Commission uh, and just to prove it, here is the PDF printout that I got back uh, with the details of my complaint and I'm told that 15 to 20 days it will take to process and I'll know at the end of that period whether it's being whether it's going to be dealt with. Uh, my complaint is against the Watchtower Bible and Track Society of Britain. Now I don't believe or I'm skeptical that my complaint will receive any attention whatsoever. I have very, very little confidence in the Charity Commission as a regulatory body. And the reasons for that will hopefully become obvious towards the end of the video. But before I go into that, I want to just briefly outline why, uh, what, what the basis of my complaint is and why it is something that the Charity Commission needs to take very seriously. So I chose the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society of Britain, but in fact there are a number of registered charities in the UK um, that are used by Jehovah's Witnesses. So there's also uh, the International Bible Students Association and there are 1,558 congregations of Jehovah's Witnesses in the UK, all of whom, to my knowledge, are registered as charities. So we're talking about a, a, or a considerable chunk of charities in the UK that are used by Jehovah's Witnesses. What is my complaint against Jehovah's Witnesses having charitable status? Well, where to begin? I've outlined on my official complaint five key areas in which I believe the Jehovah's Witnesses are in serious breach of the public benefit requirements of charities in the UK. Now what do I mean by public benefit? Well in the Charities Act of 2011 it was determined that in order for an organisation to qualify as a charity it had to demonstrate that it's it was working in the public benefit. In other words more than just the internal members had to be able to benefit from this having this charity. So the way Watchtower has got round this issue is frankly by lying, uh, by misleading the Charity Commission with very, very misleading statements on its um, summary information returns or SIR forms. Just as an example, the International Bible Students Association, when asked who benefits from your charity's work? Answers, number one, members of the public who read the literature distributed by Jehovah's Witnesses and who log on to the official website, jw.org. Number two, members of the public who attend our Bible educational conventions, religious meetings held in Kingdom Halls, open to the public and special events. Notice the word public is being used very deliberately here. Uh, number three, congregations of Jehovah's Witnesses. Oh well. And number four, associated charities such as Watchtower Bible and Tract Society of Britain. It is not members of the public who benefit from the work of Jehovah's Witnesses. It is Jehovah's Witnesses and more specifically it is the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society based in America and more specifically it is the governing body that leads that organisation. Uh, Jehovah's Witnesses are not remotely interested in helping members of the public. They are interested in making members of the public Jehovah's Witnesses. They believe that members of the public who do not become Jehovah's Witnesses will die very, very soon at Armageddon. And to underline that teaching, in as recently as the February 15th, 2014 Watchtower, when talking about Armageddon, it said, the carnage will be earthwide. These are the words of the charity, by the way, a charity. The carnage will be earthwide. Jeremiah's prophecy foretells those slain by Jehovah in that day will be from one end of the earth clear to the other end of the earth. Who are those who are going to be slain by, slain by Jehovah at Armageddon? All non-Jehovah's witnesses. So when 
the International Bible Students Association and by extension Jehovah's Witnesses tell you that they are benefiting member, members of the public, that they are interested in helping members of the public, in educating members of the public, in giving literature to members of the public. What they mean is they are interested in indoctrinating members of the public to become Jehovah's Witnesses. If they don't become Jehovah's Witnesses, then as far as Jehovah's Witnesses are concerned, the charity, Jehovah's Witnesses, they can all become bird food at Armageddon. I'm not making this up, it's in the literature. I can support everything I say in this video with hard evidence. The Watchtower Bible and Tract Society of Britain, which if you remember is a different uh, charity, simply answers the question of public benefit with Persons residing in the United Kingdom and elsewhere, extremely vague, both Jehovah's Witnesses and the wider public. Again, it's not the wider public who benefit from the work of Jehovah's Witnesses, it's Jehovah's Witnesses themselves. And any educational work that Jehovah's Witnesses do, whether it is in the form of literature, or talks, or conventions, or assemblies, is aimed at making members of the wider public Jehovah's Witnesses. It's a cult and if you're going to allow Jehovah's Witnesses to be a charity you might as well allow the Church of Scientology to be a charity too because they're into the same business but for some reason you've, been, you've allowed yourselves to be hoodwinked into embracing Jehovah's Witnesses as a charity and a large reason for that I believe is their misleading statements that they've given to you. Now, as briefly as possible, I want to go into a little bit more detail about why Jehovah's Witnesses don't meet the public benefit. Uh, this has been explained in my complaint in some detail, but I just briefly want to rattle through the reasons. There's five reasons. Number one, the terrible track record of child abuse among Jehovah's Witnesses and the, the policies, which I can show you in printed form, the policies from the leadership that enable this abuse and endanger children. Number two, shunning. People who leave the organisation such as myself, whether for conscientious reasons, reasons or whatever, are shunned by their family. And as recently as the January 15th Watchtower 2013, Watchtower instructed witnesses do not look for excuses to associate with a disfellowshipped family member, for example through email. So the human rights of people like me who leave Jehovah's Witnesses are violated through the, sh the practice of shunning which is carried out by Jehovah's Witnesses who you endorse as a charity. Number three, blood transfusions. You don't need me to tell you too much about that. Uh, since 1945, Jehovah's Witnesses have been encouraged to lay down their lives on the hospital operating bed uh, rather than accept a blood transfusion and the same applies to children. I can give you information on that as well. Number four, domestic violence. If you're a battered wife in Jehovah's Witnesses, you're not allowed to get a divorce. You're only allowed to get a divorce as a Jehovah's Witness if your spouse commits adultery and not all, not all uh, violent husbands or wives necessarily do commit adultery. Finally, number five, higher education. Many young witnesses are encouraged by Jehovah's Witnesses not to pursue higher education and this seriously compromises their employment opportunities when they grow up. I can testify to that. So five very clear ways in which the work of Jehovah's Witnesses is at odds with the public benefit requirement of charities and yet you, the Charity Commission, do nothing about it. You essentially endorse this, the, these policies and this behaviour and you insult me as a victim of Jehovah's Witnesses by essentially incentivising them to do this by awarding them charitable status for doing this to people, for allowing people like me to be shunned for allowing countless people to die in hospitals through want of a blood transfusion for allowing children to be raped and having that rape covered up I can provide, I'm, I'm not just talking off the top of my head, I can provide evidence for this and in my submission, in my complaint to the Charity Commission I have offered to present a dossier of evidence and I'll even do it in person if I have to, to show you that this is really happening. 
The reason why I'm skeptical that the Charity Commission will do anything about my complaint is because of an article that was um, put out by the uh, Third Sector, which is a, a publication for uh, voluntary and the voluntary and not-for-profit sector. And this article basically highlighted that Jehovah's Witnesses were among the two most complained about charities for the Charity Commission for the two years leading up to March 2012. It said, the central body for Jehovah's Witnesses in Britain and a spiritual healers organisation were the charities about which the Charity Commission received the most complaints in the two years to March 2012. The regulator said it had received 13 complaints about both the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society of Britain and the NFSH Charitable Trust during the period. So Jehovah's Witnesses at least for the two years between um, March 2010 and March 2012, were the most com one of the most complained about charities, and yet they're still a charity. This tells me that the Charity Commission perhaps isn't too concerned about them, isn't too ready to get them to shape up, or to revoke their charitable status if it can be demonstrated that they're not meeting the public benefit. Second reason why I'm skeptical about the Charity Commission and doubting its, um, its ability to take action as a regulator of charities is because of a recent story that emerged about a pedophile in Manchester, where I come from, who was allowed by his local elders to grill his victims on his release from jail. And I'll put a link in the description to that story, but apparently a spokeswoman for the Charity Commission said I can confirm that the Commission has ongoing serious concerns about the Manchester Moston Congregation of Jehovah's Witnesses in connection with its policies and procedures for the protection of vulnerable beneficiaries. Well, listen, it's not just the new Moston Congregation of Jehovah's Witnesses. It's Congregation of Jehovah's Witnesses all over the United Kingdom and specifically the, the two organisations I specified at the beginning of this video, the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society of Britain and the International Bible Students Association, they are the ones pulling the strings. They are the ones that the new Moston elders are ordered to go to for advice in dealing with child abuse. And for some reason, you have a hear no evil, see no evil approach to dealing with these main two organisations who are violating human rights who are serious putting children in harm's way and who don't come anywhere close to meeting the public benefit requirements. So that's why I'm skeptical. Um, and what I would like, the, the aim of this video is not just to address the Charity Commission, but also to get all of my subscribers to do something about it. What do I mean? Well, I'm going to put a link in the description for how you, if you're a UK citizen watching this video, how you can fill out, how you can produce one of these complaints. I'm going to put a link in the description and some suggestions. I'm going to put what I put just to give you some idea of what to say. If you want, you can put, by all means, put it in your own words, but I just want to help you as much as possible. You may be saying, well, I'm not in the UK. How can I help? Well, if you're on Twitter, the Charity Commission has a Twitter account, so you can send out a tweet and hopefully if enough of us send out tweets to the Charity Commission about Jehovah's Witnesses, someone somewhere at the Charity Commission might sit up and take notice. And thirdly and finally, you can share this video to as many people as possible. Get them to send complaints into the Charity Commission if they're a UK citizen, or get them to use their Twitter account to, to raise awareness of this very, very grave and serious issue. Charity Commission, you need to do your job. There are organisations throughout the UK masquerading as charities under false pretenses and you are letting them get away with this. You are incentivising these organisations to ruin the lives of people like me and it cannot go on. Please do your job.